episode 137, Developing a Healthy Sexuality with Dan Purcell. Welcome to Latter Day Life Coaches, the podcast where each episode is a conversation between me, Heather Rackham, and one of my amazing coach colleagues. Each coach here is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints and a highly trained, experienced life coach making a great impact in the lives of their clients. And together, we have one main goal, helping you live your best life no matter what. You ready for this conversation with the coach? Here we go. We are sexual beings just as much as we are physical and spiritual beings. In fact, the development of our spiritual being is connected to the development of our sexual one. Coach Dan Purcell is on the podcast today talking about the importance of sexuality and how we each can develop it more. He is a firm believer that sexuality is best grown in a marriage relationship and that parents can have a great influence on their children's sexuality as they grow their sexual relationship in the marriage. Dan shares great tips as well as the name of a fun sex app he's developed that is free and will help spice things up in your marriage. So make sure you take a listen and then start to have more fun and creativity as you develop your sexuality. Welcome, everybody. Glad to have all of you listeners here today, and I'm glad to have Coach Dan Purcell with me. Hey, Dan. Hey, happy to be here. This is awesome. I am so happy to be with you today. Dan was, I said, we're going to hit record, and it was like a cheer of enthusiasm that came out, so (laughs) I know it's going to be a good time today. Thank Uh you. I love it. The enthusiasm is always contagious and it makes it makes for a great conversation. But Dan, before we get started, can you tell people a little bit about you? Yes, I'm Dan. My wife and I have been married for over 19 years. We have six children. We live in beautiful St. George, Utah. I like outdoors and outdoorsy type stuff, running, cycling, mountain biking, hiking. You're in the right Uh, place. Sounds yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I like to run. That's kind of my Zen, how I kind of go out and meditate and whatever. And uh, my oldest just graduated from high school. So I'm kind of entering a new phase where our first child is about to leave the nest. So it's kind of a exciting and scary phase of life for me. I'm glad you used the words exciting and scary. I think having my oldest leave, so I'm on, my third child is going to leave this year, but I, that old, that first one was kind of like, it kind of rocked my boat a little bit, kind of like nothing's going to ever be the same again. Boy, this is going to sound depressing, but that's kind of how it was. It was kind of a, it was a rough one for me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> how old's your youngest? She's six. Six. Okay. So you have. And it alternates boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Lucky you. Nailed it. <laughs> yes. Nice work. That's uh-huh. awesome. Well, thank you for sharing a little bit about you. Will you tell us also, you're a coach, obviously, because you're here on this podcast. Tell us who you work with, what your audience is. I work with individuals and couples that want to have an amazing sex life. that want to improve intimacy and their sexual relationship in their marriage. I love it. Okay. So right from the get-go, I want to know the difference. How would you say the difference is between sex and sexuality? Um, when you say like, I'm developing my sexuality, sexuality is something like it's a part of you. We are sexual beings, even in our womb, just as we're developing, just as we're a spiritual person, intellectual, emotional, we're also sexual also. So when you say developing your sexuality or what's it, what is sexuality? It's the aspect of us that, uh, defines kind of our experience with with sexuality and and that dimension of who we are. That's a great way to look at it. Just like we would develop emotionally and physically, our sexuality is one of those things that also does develop. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Important to look at it that way. Yeah. And the more I do this work, there's so many parallels between spiritual development and sexual development. Mm -hmm. You know, people really have a hard time mixing those two ideas together, but they're so related. Isn't that interesting? It's so fascinating to me that we do have such a hard time mixing those two things together. However, 
the, like you said, the more we look at it, the more you come to understand it more, it's really hard to separate those two things in all honesty. Yes. They, they go hand in hand in so they many do. ways. Mm-hmm. Okay. So a lot of people only think that sexuality can be developed in marriage, especially in within our faith, as we mm-hmm. teach that we abstain from having sexual relations until we're married. Right. How is it possible then to develop our sexuality outside of marriage in a way that still feels like it complies with church doctrine and commandments? Uh-huh. I think the first thing that we need to understand is like, it's how does our sexuality, being sexual beings, mm-hmm. uh, aid in our development and growth? If it's spiritual, for example, okay. knowing that we're spiritual kind of gives us a kind of a purpose. It kind of orients us. It kind of gives us a direction to go and it aids in our development. Mm-hmm. As we give us permission, I think I'm, I'm interjecting here a little bit, but it gives us permission to seek for things that help us develop our spirituality, when we recognize that, when we just even know that it's part of us. Right, right. For example, for most people, their spiritual journey often looks like in the early stages, it's very much, they view the world like black and white, punishment and reward, right? God is angry when I do this. He's very pleased when I do that, that kind of a view. Mm -hmm. And then as your spirituality continues to develop, then you kind of have more of a, well, what does God want from me? Or what do others want from me? What what fits in with this crowd? And, and you kind of go from there, or you gain a testimony based on what other people's experiences are, mm-hmm. which is very important part of our development. Right. All of those phases are very yes. important. Uh-huh. And sometimes we think that we should try to skip that beginning, bit, you know, like that black and white phase where I always think, oh, I wish I could go back and not look at things so black and white. But that's a very important part of the the journey for us. Yes. That's where you start. Exactly. And like beginning a testament, the book of Mormon, for example, uh, so even my children, they're going to borrow my testimony for a while, so to speak, because they trust me or whatever aspect, or or even faith in Jesus Christ. They haven't. And that's, that's when you kind of reach that third stage in your growth and development when you're like, okay, I, I can have an independent testimony. I can stand on my own mm-hmm. about these things, but it kind of pushes you to grow and develop. And then life happens. You have challenges. You have things that test your faith, question your faith, things that you thought were right all of a sudden aren't, or it's not so clear cut back black and white as you thought so in an earlier stage. So all these like things in life just kind of push you to grow more spiritually. If we can look at our sexuality in the same way, like we go through those same stages too. And, but our sexuality can be really there to kind of develop us and help us grow as a person. For example, my daughter, she's 16, she's boy crazy. And this boy that she likes, here's that she's, she, and my daughter likes musicals. So she, he came to one of her performances of, of a musical she was in. Now she performed extra hard <laughs> to impress this boy, right? Yeah, of course. So that's part of our sexuality in that way, right? We want this part of like, oh, this boy's interested in me. I'm kind of interested in him. It pushes my development. I'm going to push to grow more. So that's one of the benefits, I think, of being sexual beings. We can use it to help us kind of grow up, just like being spiritual beings and life kind of helps us grow up. Mm-hmm. So if you kind of understand that from an early stage, you'll kind of understand why we have the law of chastity, because if it's something for that development, you'll want to have it in the container of a fully committed relationship for it to fully express itself. And so it's not that sex is bad until you're married and it's good. Sex has always been good, but to utilize its full expression, you'll want to have it in in a committed relationship for it because it's so deep there's it's so raw it's so core to who we are there has to be an equal level of commitment and emotional maturity in order to handle the the true growth and development that our full expression of sexuality can provide i think that's a great explanation and i think it it also helps me see that it is important for us to recognize and teach our kids 
that it's like those feelings that they have, you know, your daughter wanting to impress and all the feelings that kind of come along with those early excitement stages that we feel there's nothing wrong with them, that we actually want them. We need to experience them. It's when we think there's something wrong when we, you know, tell our kids, Oh, Uh you shouldn't be feeling that. Or, Uh or we don't, we don't let them just even recognize what they are, that it becomes really a problem in their development. If, if we don't let them see how healthy it is. Yes. I have a story on that. So I'd love to hear it. I, I grew up thinking having any sexual thought was sinful, like Mm -hmm. having sexual thoughts equals sinful. Just that's just what I absorbed. Right. So I'm engaged to be married. We're a few weeks from being married. And I go into my Bishop to confess, like I've been having sexual thoughts about my fiance. We're not acting on any of these things, but I can't help it. Like I feel so dirty. And he looks at me, he was a great bishop, but he's, he's the accountant. So he's the, okay. <laughs> no personality, stereotypical. <laughs> he's like, oh, I fantasize sexually about my wife all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him like my jaw drops, right? Like you, you think sexually about your wife? And it's like, yeah, all the time. Like there's no, this is normal. This is great. This is what you're supposed to be doing. And I walked out of the office so confused, like, because one moment I thought it was dirty and sinful. Next is like, wait, this is normal. This is, this is okay. It's like, this is supposed to happen. I, I felt so hard. validated and normalized. Yes. It was so validated relieving. and normalized, but it uh-huh. can be kind of hard to reconcile too. Like, yes. wait, why did I think this? Or why mm-hmm. are we, whoever helped to propagate those ideas? Uh-huh. I don't know. It's just a hard, it's a hard thing to, to reconcile in our minds if we. Right. And kind of like that journey of faith from that, like black and white thinking to more yes. like borrowing a testimony of others. That was like my moment too, in a way, like I just to see it so black and white, but now I can kind of rely on, on this person I respect and his experience. Like, well, maybe, maybe there is some more good here. Yes. Maybe it's not so black and white, but then again, in my coaching, I do come across people that as they start developing their sexuality, it causes a faith crisis because a lot of their ideas about sexuality come from the religious culture they grew up in or what parents taught them, young women's lessons, young men's lessons. And now that their real lived experience kind of goes against kind of the messages they internalized. Now they wonder what else did my leaders teach me? that wasn't right. And they, so they can kind of go down that rabbit hole pretty quickly. And it often leads to a faith crisis, have a yeah, difficulty. Totally. Like, let's walk through that a little bit, because I think that this is not something that's just unique to somebody understanding their sexuality, right? This happens in many areas where they we learn something new and it butts up against something that we already knew that we thought that we knew. And I guess this has very much to do with our spiritual progression. I, um, yes. Uh-huh. But what would you say to people who are really grappling and struggling with like, I I'm having a hard time reconciling this. Maybe I just need to, maybe what I thought I always believed is not true after all. And I should just leave. Like, what are your thoughts there? What would you say? Well, I can, I can answer that with a story. Okay, if you want. Do. And it was kind of a loaded question. <laughs> You're right, exactly. Question, uh-huh. I would love to hear a story. <laughs> so um, I'm at this point, I'm married 13 years in my marriage. And my wife and I have had a good, we've had a good marriage. We go on date nights regularly uh, when we can find a brave babysitter, <laughs> what, six <laughs> kids. And um, we, uh, we get along well. We're just really good friends. Um, but when it came to sex, because of the models we've, kind of were handed we we kind of had a very limited view of what 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 sex kind of looked like and what it could be and also it's again kind of more black and white back then like venturing out and learning more about sex and even in the context of our marriage just felt very taboo no one talks about this Mm -hmm. like it's like people just don't talk about things or if it was if it is talked about that often it's it's the pornography and how horrible pornography is and addicting and destructive it is for marriages so in my mind i equate anything me anything that might lead to exploring sexuality more is pornography mm. 
and therefore is bad. So at this point, I'm having a, a meeting with, a, I, I was talking with a friend and my friend opened up to me about his sex life with his wife. And I guess you could say I had morbid curiosity because <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. Oh, gross! No, wait, wait. I want to see. It's like the car accident. Everyone yeah. like goes slow because they kind of want to see, but you don't want to see at the yeah. same time. Yeah. That was totally me. <laughs> and uh, he was telling me about like oral sex, about like bedroom games, about um, sex position, like books you can buy. Like I didn't like really good people do this. Like <laughs> this is blowing my mind. Like how can this be? And the reason why he was telling me wasn't to boast, but he was telling me like once he and his wife really invested in their sexual relationship, their bond and connection became way stronger. Mm -hmm. And I could see he had something I didn't have. Like I wanted that. Yeah. And so, but again, it kind of turned my world upside down. Like, wait, it's okay. It felt like there's a, a, a minefield. You don't know where the landmines are, right? So you never dare venture out. And I'm talking to someone that's kind of bent there and back. It's like, no, it's it's fine. You just take this path and you know, you, you look for things. You know what to avoid. But there's all this good to be had. And uh, I was too timid to go in to take that journey because mm -hmm. I didn't know if I I had it in me. Yeah. I go home that night to my wife and say, "You'll never guess what conversation I had with my friend." And. Um, Probably for the first time in our marriage, we had one of the most vulnerable like conversations about our sex life to that point. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about this? What do you think? And I, I was really interested, like, am I a good enough lover? <laughs> That's what I really wanted to know. <laughs> like, <laughs> is she satisfied in bed? Like, but those are the real questions I wanted to get yeah. to, right? Yeah. We're up to like 2 a.m. talking that night and then 1 a.m. the next night. We're just up really late. Just these were deep questions we were grappling with. So, and that it was that, wait how can you be a spiritual person and a sexual person at the same time? Like, so just from our upbringing, they seem so yeah. different. And the way through it for us was, well, okay, let's learn more about it. We found some books written by good Christian authors. I went to lunch with a sex therapist friend of mine that was in our neighborhood. We talked about it and we started trying new things and different things. And then just like, not throwing caution to the wind or anything, but let's, let's try it and mm -hmm. see what our lived experience is like. Cause the end goal for us was stronger connection, better communication, like mm -hmm. everything, like let's look to the fruits because right. Jesus teaches by the fruits, you'll know them. Right. So we right. started trying a few things and then look, the fruits are really good. Then we want to try some other things or talk about some things or explore some other ideas. And those fruits are really good. So as long as we made like, what is the fruit of this kind of our judge? It became our guide. And we found within months, like our bond was getting closer together. We're parenting together better. We're communicating better. All of a sudden the sky was bluer. Our grass was growing greener. Like all these other things in life just started like Rose really colored clicking. glasses. I know, right? <laughs> it, just, it started really getting good. And our relationship got way better, partially because of the growth we both had to go through. Mm -hmm. in that process. And we, it took, you know, we're courageously going through it together. Yeah. Listening to that story and going back to the question, you know, where, where I, what I asked and, you know, what would you say to people who are questioning everything they've ever believed? Maybe it, it may or may not be sexually, but there are things that come up in our, in our religious culture where people start to question. And I, I think hearing you speak is like, we have to hang on a little bit. We just can't abandon all things just because something feels a little uncomfortable. We have to, we have to find some anchors. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Sit with things, trust mm -hmm. yourself. I don't know, trust your ability to, to be uncomfortable while you explore a little bit and, and get a better understanding of things. Yes. Give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. Yeah. yeah. And Actually, the more I've pondered and thought about our theology, mm -hmm. I think we have the most sex positive religion on the planet because we believe, first of all, in eternal marriage, right? right? We believe in a little resurrection. I know other Christians do too, but we believe that very strongly and that our marriage relationships last like we can be married through a, a temple ceiling. 
to the other side. Yeah. We also believe in a heavenly father and a heavenly mother, that they have physical bodies and that we're created in their image. So frankly speaking, like heavenly father has a penis and the heavenly mother has a vulva too. Like we've inherited the, from those. What we experience on earth is also a pattern of how things are in heaven. Mm -hmm. Even though the way children are created in a way could reflect a pattern in heaven. So we see like sexuality as being a very uh, strong and important part of who we are when you look at it from an eternal perspective and part of God's plan too. Mm -hmm. So I think Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother are very sex positive. They're very like... I, I don't know. I, I like to picture them more like cheering, cheering us on when we're, when we're enjoying this gift and we're yeah. really getting the most we can out of receiving everything that we can from this part of us. Thank you for sharing that. And I think that's something that's important for all of us to understand. I'm curious, you know, you and I, we've talked a little bit about some of our, the negative thoughts that we had about sexuality that were kind of taught to us growing up. I think our culture has changed a lot. We've gotten better at how we talk about those things, but I'm, you have six kids. I just want to know, like, if you have any tips or pointers for us as for people, as parents, like raising children to embrace their sexuality, what do you and your wife do in your home to help them have a, a better experience? Oh yeah. If I was to give myself a report card, yeah. Just to be really honest, I'd probably yeah. give myself a B plus, okay. maybe a B. I'm, <laughs> I'm not an A plus in this area. Okay. Um, part of it is because it was 13 years into our marriage when we started right. to kind of, so right. if we had could rewind the clock, we'd probably a little bit better. But that being said. I think that's um, probably the case for most of us. I know, right? right? It's never yeah. too late, they say, right. and right. I'm holding on to that, right? Yeah. So um, that being said, there's a few things that we've done. First of all, is we're not shy to talk about it because I coach couples on sex all the time. Mm -hmm. And I come home, sometimes these are dinner table conversations, like, but the conversation about sex worth my coaching is really rarely on like the mechanics of sex. It's right. more of like the, the dynamic and the relationships that's affecting their sexual relationship. So it's, I think my children are picking up quickly that sex is a relational thing. Okay. Which I, I want them to have that model that sex is in, in context of a relationship. Yeah. The other thing though, is we've done this with our older two kids is uh, we've assigned them the home, family home needing lesson on occasion to mm -hmm. teach about sex, about reproduction at least. And it gives us as parents an opportunity to see what they actually know and don't know. Oh, I'm sure they love that. Yeah, it was really <laughs> uncomfortable for them. You know, we helped them out through them all, but but they did great. I'm yeah. like, you know, high-fiving them and they feel a little better afterwards. Yeah. It's really awkward and shy to talk to your kids, but you got to do it. Yeah. There was a book I read called, um, and it was very good. It's written by an LDS couple. They've renamed um, Anonymous, but if you search for it, you can download the PDF of it for free. It's on Amazon and Audible too. Okay. The, their pen name is Heavenly Parents. Oh, I and like that. they have a chapter on there where they've interviewed, I think they were connected to a YSA group or something where they interviewed couples or YSA or young, young married adults ward or something, what your honeymoon experience was like. And they've collected all these honeymoon horror stories about like things gone wrong, you know, like I thought this and it wasn't that way. And just story after story is heartbreaking. And then they end the chapter with a few positive stories. And I don't want my kids to have a honeymoon horror story. I don't want them to show up and then like expect with reality and expectations being so different. So yeah. it's having the talk and just having conversations about it. And there's, it's easy to talk about the reproductive biology side mm -hmm. of sex, which is an important aspect, but what about the pleasure side? How do, do your daughters know how to have that sex is not for the man? It's yeah. it's for her just as much. Like we don't want our daughters to be raised with the idea that sex is something you do to please the husband only. It's uh, we want just as much for her as it is for anyone else. Also to pick up on how people use their sexuality to get attention. Some people will use their sexuality to attract people or in one case, like they will have sex with their boyfriend because they want their boyfriend to like him. 
Do you see how they've used their sexuality to kind of get something? Mm -hmm. We don't want like, so let's pick up on messages, pick up on themes they might see, like how are people using it in ways that are constructive or not constructive? Like you never use your sexuality to get something from another person. It's kind of the message we want to teach them too. We've also talked about birth control. Like this, this is how it works. Like there's the different kinds out there. Here's an example of this. Uh, once I bought a 3D printed model of genitals, like for educational purposes in my <laughs> coaching. Awesome. And I don't know about your kids, but when a package has arrived, they all want to open it, right? <laughs> I knew <laughs> yeah, what this ahead, was. No, go <laughs> like, ahead sure, and open that open one. It, go ahead. <laughs> and they did. I'm like, Dad, what's this? <laughs> Why'd you get this? You know, it's kind of funny. You're uh-huh. going to have an impromptu lesson there too. So one year it. for Christmas, we bought uh, books of um, Renaissance art that include a lot of nude uh, paintings. Mm-hmm. And it's not pornographic. These are beautiful right. paintings showing and celebrating the human body. And we have these in our home because we we want to normalize its it, bodies. This, this right. is okay. This is beautiful. This is fine. And, um, at first the kids are so interested, like so curious. And they felt like, like our, uh, child was five at the time he'd hide the book under his pillow. <laughs> <laughs> you felt, I guess you had to, had to keep secretive, but after a short while it wore off, like, yeah. right. It wears off. Cause they kind of get accustomed to, no, no, this is fine. This is normal. Yeah. Nothing to see here anymore. I'm yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I think and- the most important thing you can do for your children is to have a great, the best you can to build a great sexual relationship with your spouse Mm -hmm. first, because they'll feel it. They'll know it. If you and your spouse have a great relationship and you yourself learn how to really like sex and look forward to it, it's going to show up in your attitude in all other ways. And that that's what they pick up on the most. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I, you know, I I think for also, you said, you know, some of those things are awkward and uncomfortable. And I have had to learn that it's okay for me to say, I know this might feel awkward. And like, but we're going to talk about it in hopes that eventually these things don't feel awkward and uncomfortable because they, they don't need to, but that's mm-hmm. just how it is. So I think we can be honest with our kids too, that, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it can feel a little uncomfortable. I, this isn't something that I'm used to talking about every day or whatever, but just helping them understand that we're all working on this together. Right. Yeah. Love it. Okay. So we have a lot of fear around sexuality and sex, and it affects so many marriages. I, and, and we've kind of like this converse, at least this question may have been answered and seeded through this conversation, but how can couples have more fun when it comes to their sexuality? Woo, and their sexuality? That's where I come in. This is, this is your, <laughs> like, this is, the this is my specialty. Making yeah. it fun. Right. Let's hear it. <laughs> so there's, an enormous amount of creativity that can be had in this. I, you know, God doesn't command in all things like, and I don't, I think that commandment of not commanding in all things applies most in the bedroom. (laughs) There's so much flexibility and leeway and a lot of canvas to kind of paint on here. Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of ideas. So I am an app developer by training, been in software for a while. So just over 13 years into our marriage, when my wife and I started discovering these things for ourselves, we wanted to share what we were learning with others. So a great medium for me was to make an app. So I have an app called Intimately Us. It's free on the app stores, just search Intimately Us. And it's an app full of tons of creative ideas and bedroom games, questions, conversation starters, uh, all those kinds of things. For example, one of the games is called Battle Strip. It's like Battleship, but it's items of clothing. So you and your spouse both install the app and you sync your accounts. And then you input what, like I have a shirt on, I have pants on, I have socks on, whatever. Mm-hmm. And she does the same thing. And then you play and you t- it's, it's like battleship, but you try gotcha. to guess where things are. And then the clothing gets removed when you sync it. So love it. Like, that's like an example, but yeah. there's tons of other games that we have in there. Uh, so that's one option. There's, there's apps you can do. Another product that we developed is called Sheets and Ladders. It's shoots and ladders like that Mm -hmm. game, but it's printed on a fitted sheet. It goes on your king or queen bed and (laughs) it's got blank spaces everywhere and it comes with washable markers. 
and a list of ideas of things you can add in. So you basically create your own board game and you roll a dice and see where it lands and you can play that and then advance. And uh, anyway, so that's kind of another fun game that we've created. So creative. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, so you can buy that on Amazon and it's also at sheetsandladders.com. But the sky's the limit there. So yeah. a lot of it has to do with like, there's this divide, like, I want to have sex. I don't feel like having sex. Mm -hmm. There's sometimes that gap feels so wide. Like I want to connect because I want the benefits of that. But it's like uh, if if enjoying sex to the full extent with pleasure and orgasm, and everything is on the if on stairs. It's on the tenth stair, on the top stair, and you're feeling at stair one or, or two. It feels like a big chasm uh, to cross, right? And sometimes your spouse, you and your spouse are on a different step. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one might be way on, on step eight or nine and the other's on step one or two. And you're trying to drag the other spouse up the stairs. It doesn't quite work that way. So things you can do together that connect at the level of this lower spouse and kind of with a commitment to try to climb up the stairs together one step at a time is often a more effective approach. We tend to take sex to black and white, to on and off, rather than looking at more of this beautiful maybe space in between. Mm -hmm. Like you don't go to Disneyland and not ride the Matterhorn and say, I went all that way to Disneyland and I did not ride the Matterhorn. I did not go to Disneyland. No, there's lots of things to enjoy while you're at the park. So when we take sex and having sex with our spouse, you kind of open our definition more of what sex is and can be. It doesn't always have to look a certain way or be a certain thing. It doesn't have to be the Matterhorn, so to right. speak. Yes. It can be teacups one day. It could be, I don't know. Sometimes you might want something more adventurous too. Like yeah. it can be all these different things. It really eases up a lot of the pressure you feel about yeah. how sex has to be. And it opens you up for more creativity. And I think that the other piece to that is, is when you kind of take the pressure off that resistance that you felt to even having sex in the first place starts goes away. to go away. So right. they, it goes hand in hand and it creates something beneficial on, on all areas. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. And then it's okay. more pleasurable. It's more connecting. It's more bonding, which is the goal anyway. Mm -hmm. So those are all the benefits you get from having that kind of a more take that better attitude, I guess. Mm -hmm. So fascinating. I love it. Okay. And, and I love the products that you mentioned, because mm -hmm. I, those are super creative. I would have never considered looking for an app. I don't know why, but that's uh -huh. not something that would come to my mind. There's and a lot do... of like R rated apps out there. Ours oh, is I'm only sure like, there is. <laughs> it's not crass. It's not raunchy, yeah. but it's What's not the rating. Either. Like they, they come with ratings. <laughs> I'm curious how they rate your, <laughs> well, <laughs> mine's 17 plus. Cause I don't want kids to get it. Right. But, right. right. Uh -huh. That is, I hadn't <laughs> considered that. That's funny. Okay. So before we go, Dan, is there anything else that you, that you think we need to know? Anything we've missed talking about today that would be helpful for. As I work with couples mm -hmm. who have like really done the work to really grow together sexually. I see how much it benefits them today. Like they're happier. There's a pep in their step. They're smiling more. They're more connected and they're growing together. They feel like their marriage is like on a trajectory of growth and happiness. But that's not all. It blesses their children and it blesses their children's children. So this work of really working on growing your sexuality is not a selfish thing. It helps your children and your whole posterity. I've also seen the opposite where because of a couple did not get their sexual relationship right and the messages that were handed down to their children, they tend to marry people that inherited the same problems as they did. And those difficulties happen and so on and so on. So it's so important that if you and your spouse really don't feel you're on the same page sexually, or you feel like you're missing, like uh, you're living beneath your privileges, there's more that can be had. Or if it's not something you can feel really honestly feel like you're enthused about, there's a great opportunity to get more coaching on this specifically, because what's on the other side of that is more connection, more pleasure. Like we all need more pleasure in our right, life, right? It's like right. a vacation every time, right? Yeah. We need that. We need that. Um, not only that, but it's just, it's also uh, good sex drives our development. 
It drives our spiritual development. It'll drive your physical development. It'll drive you in other ways too. It'll make you be more patient. It'll make you, it's like the 13th article of faith. It'll make you be more like uh, honest, true, <laughs> chaste, right? right? More benevolent. It drives all those qualities as you seek after those good things that come from having a good sexual relationship. I, you know, we believe we have a progressive theology. We believe in progress mm -hmm. and as human beings, we thrive on progression and you can really see how trying to develop your, your, your sexual relation with a spouse helps us to progress as individuals, as a couple. And like you said, it, it goes on. It's, it's not just for now. It affects generations. So mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that with us today. I think this has been such a fun conversation and <laughs> so good. It's such a good one. Thank you so Thank much. You. Dan. Yes. Yes. Hey, Dan, I need to know where people can find. I know you shared your app with us, but um, where else can they find you? My website is getyourmarriageon.com and I'm on Instagram at getyourmarriageon. Perfect. We'll link to those things in the show notes. This is great. I think everybody should probably send this to their spouse and get listening to this episode. So yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Have a good one, everybody. Oh, and, and I should also mention, I have a podcast myself oh. called get your marriage on. And we do all sorts of topics. Some of our episodes are very spicy, very nitty gritty, very detailed. And others are more, um, I guess you call them sex testimonies. Yeah. <laughs> like we interview couples that have, you know, gone through a lot of uh, where they've really confronted themselves and really grown and kind of share their story too. So all sorts of great tips you will get from my podcast. Good. I love it. Does your wife ever make appearances on your podcast or oh, is yeah. it just you? She She's does. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, like I said, we'll link to the, all those things in the show notes and you guys that are listening, we'll see you again next week. And Dan, thank you for being with us today. Thanks. Hey, we just wanted to thank you for spending part of your day here with us at Latter-day Life Coaches and being part of this conversation. Share this with your friends so that you can have a conversation with them on this topic as well. And as always, subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Have a good one, my friends.